So welcome back students. So we continue with our module 4, this is the 6th lecture. So in the previous lecture we have seen the catalyst, uh, the main the catalyst and its reactors and we also seen the exothermicity of the reactors. We have seen exothermic reactors, we have seen the fluidized bed reactors in the previous lecture also. Okay, so today we are going to see a new invention or it is a new uh, innovation in these reactors and we have discussed it a little bit uh, about this, these are called monolith reactors. So monolith reactors as the name suggests, uh, you know that uh, these reactors are specially useful for automotive emission. So these are mostly used in automobiles, although there are some applications concerning chemical industry which we will touch upon. So, what are the contents of this lecture? We will see what are monoliths, what do you mean by the monolith? Then uh, uh, in general monoliths, what does the structure look like? They are type of structured reactors. So, it means that there are some peculiar thing about its structure, the way it is made, the catalyst is prepared and then with this particular structure, how we can use it in these monolith reactors, we will see what are these monolith reactors in briefly. Then the major part of our lecture will be focusing on this automotive emission control. So this automotive emission control as you are aware, this is uh, important aspects in our day to day life but because you must be knowing that uh, if you are having or owning a automobile you need to produce a POC, okay, the pollution certificate. This pollution certificate is nothing but it is just a catalytic converter which actually converts the exhaust gases to some gases which are within the limits as prescribed by the government agencies. So what are these? The heart of these processes are the monolith reactors. So we will see that and then we will touch upon briefly uh, the one example of where monolithic reactor is used which is the production of thallic anhydride. So what are monoliths? Monoliths are mostly prevalent and conceptually the simplest structured reactors. So these are structures in such a way, these are made in such a way, these are continuous construction composed of tiny parallel channels. So the tiny parallel channels which is around 1 to 3 millimeter in diameter. So you have a number of these channels, they may be of different shapes, these channels while they are made, so it means that it avoids the tortuous path of the catalyst particles, other catalyst shapes which we have discussed earlier. So yes, so what is that advantage you get? The advantage you get is there will be a lower pressure drop. So mostly the support of this monoliths are ceramic or metallic supports. These are extruded into blocks and is then coated with a layer of material. Okay, so they are coated with a layer of material, this metallic support. And this layer of material has that active ingredient scattered or it is dispersed in this layer of material, this is called the wash coat. Okay. So this forms channels because you have this tiny parallel channels, these channels or you can say it is capillaries, they may be round, may be triangular, they may be square, hexagonal or other shapes. So depending upon your application, you may have different shapes. So the entire monolithic block can be molded to fit into the reaction chamber. So this entire block, some, suppose there is some casing, another casing you put this block inside. So that block, what are the things you need to take here? The channel size and the channel orientation, whether it is hexagonal, square, triangular, like that. So if you see, this is one uh, typical example of a monolithic catalyst. So this is the substrate, substrate means these are the channels, if you see these are the channels here. These are the channels, this goes longitudinally across the entire shape, these are the, all the channels. So these are the we call it substrate. So when this substrate is coated, that is we call this wash coat. So wash coat means these are the coatings which comes, these coatings are nothing but it consists the active ingredient. So they are coated with the active ingredient. So the active ingredient we can say it is dispersed onto this. So you make on that actually it is called wash coat, still it is not prepared, then there are some intermediate steps, finally what the catalytic layer gets deposited. So this is the catalytic layer, so these are the channels and these are the catalyst layers deposited and on these catalytic layers you have the catalytic species also dispersed, this black species. So we are, uh, I mean we are looking at a very small uh, portion, a small cross-sectional di dimension 
of that particular substrate. Like that, it is through and through towards the entire channel. So, this is an example with a square channel. So, as you see, this is the channel is square. So, this square, so this is the square channel we have seen. Okay. So, this is the way a monolithic reactor with a square channel is prepared. So, now where is the example? As I told you, the monolithic reactors, the examples are in those applications which requires lower pressure drop or where you cannot use fixed bed reactor. For example, if you use a fixed bed reactor, you may use a catalyst, but this catalyst may be having attrition problem. So, if it is attrition problem, they may de deactivate. So, in those cases, monolithic reactors are preferred. So, uh, let me again remind you, it does not mean that you start using monolithic reactors for each and every application. It is only those applications where there are certain disadvantages and you cannot conduct the reaction. So, one of them is automotive emission control. So, these are ideally suited for applications requiring low pressure drop. Please keep in mind, this low pressure drop is a key word, such as the conversion of hazardous components. What are the hazardous components coming out? Carbon monoxide, okay, then NOx. So, what do we do? So, he, if there is a fuel, it is combusted. If the total combustion is there, you will get carbon dioxide and water. But the hydrocarbons are not totally combusted. The hydrocarbons are incomplete combusted and then you form carbon monoxide, NOx. Well, NOx does not have any influence on the fuel because it has within the air nitrogen and this nitrogen actually reacts with the radical oxygen and to form NOx. So, uh, it is some more to do with the temperature and the oxidizing environment rather than to do with the fuel. Nevertheless, the concentration of NOx also we should take care. This concentration of NOx should be eliminated and there are some certain prescribed limits. So, why in automotive? You may ask why do we use then in automotive? Only low pressure drop, is it a satisfactory answer? No, because the pressure drop if it is more, it will put pressure in the exhaust line. So, pressure in exhaust line means it will require more power and more power means it will consume more fuel. So, this is the reason why monolithic reactors came into prominence. So, the advantages are quite obvious, the reduced pressure drop compared to a typical fixed bed reactor because it is flowing through straight channels as obvious to a winding routes of catalyst particles. So, in the paths are not they are tortuous in case of catalyst particles, but here it is straight path, so lower pressure drop and there is no attrition because the catalyst is coated. You remember the last slide I have shown that is a wash coat is there, catalyst particle is dispersed. The use of monoliths in the purification of automobile exhaust fumes, this is the greatest achievement in the field of chemical engineering and catalysis. So, catalysis and chemical engineering, this is the biggest innovation which has been made in the past several decades. So, what has that innovation and if we prior to monolith, what was there earlier? But uh, remember one thing, in the earlier the legislation was not that strict, so we did not have strict content of CO or CO2 or hydrogen or NOx, all these things we are not so strict. But nowadays more and more strict legis legislation are coming, so it means the catalytic converter needs to be more robust, it needs to be lightweight because if it is heavy, uh, then uh, it will consume more uh, power and it should also be not affected by the vibration. So, a typical automotive emission control we should see what are the different compounds which are in the exhaust gases. So, I am putting here a uh, example of a gasoline or in India we call it petrol engine. In the petrol engine if you see these are the gases which are in the exhaust nitrogen, CO2, water, oxygen, carbon monoxide, HC is hydrocarbon, this is based on methane concentration, then uh, in NOx then SOx. So, all these and then the particulate matter. Now, this particulate matter uh, I am focusing on gasoline, it is very less as compared to diesel. Okay. Why I will tell you later, in the gasoline part we will actually focus in our subsequent discussion, but later on we will also see what improvement or what is the difference in the reactor in case of diesel engine, because both gasoline and diesel they work in different environment, while one of them work in oxidizing environment, other works in reducing environment. So, that is why you cannot apply a single reactor for both the diesel and gasoline engines. So, the reactors are different. 
So let us see what is it, it is obviously as before 74 percent is nitrogen because air is coming out, the remaining 79 percent, 74, so 5 percent is lost here, 67 percent also of remaining 79, no? so, so 79 minus 67 means 12 percent is lost, where it is lost, it is lost and converted to NOx. So if you see this NOx 0 0.25, 0 0.15, although the numbers are in volume percent, this is pretty high, so then oxygen, carbon monoxide is 1 to 2 percent volume percent. But uh, now, now you see this carbon monoxide, this hydrocarbon is very less in diesel as compared to gasoline. This is mainly to do with whether the fuel is in the lean condition or in rich condition. When I say lean, lean means fuel is less, more of oxygen, so oxidizing environment, while fuel rich condition means more of fuel, less of oxygen, so reducing. Okay. So, from there we will get the answer, but I will explain it in detail. For now, just remember that the amount of CO and HC produced by gasoline is pretty, pretty higher. This is pretty, pretty higher when compared to diesel because of this fuel lean and fuel rich condition. Similarly, NOx you will have lesser in diesel as compared to gasoline. That is also another reason why because of the fuel nature. Particulate matter, this is very important because particulate matter means you, okay, fine, you are not producing CO and HC, the gasoline, then something it will produce. Well, it can producing NOx which is higher in amount, but you know, people do not worry about NOx much in the previous decades because NOx not much uh, in attention has been paid. Most of the attention has been paid to the carbon monoxide uh, mostly and hydrocarbons. So, that is why this NOx is not a problem, but the problem is the biggest is particulate matter. And what is this particulate matter? Particulate matter is of soot because it is a soot, soot means carbon which is deposited on the converter or you may have let us say soluble organic fraction SOF. What are the soluble organic fraction? Let us say you have oxygenates or you have this poly aromatic rings compounds, all these are you know these are called as soluble organic fraction SOF, we call this SOF, soluble organic fraction. So, it will contain the soluble organic, so particulate matter is soluble organic frac, uh, you can say it is soluble organic fraction, F stands for fraction. So, this may contain unburnt, unburnt hydrocarbons, HCM ready for hydrocarbons or then you can also call them oxygenates. and that pH polyaromatic hydrocarbons, these are very dangerous, so these are produced soft. Then sometimes sulfuric acid also, okay. so that is why the reason this particular matter still to be reduced. So, we will see what are the conditions where the reactor operates. So, if you see in this particular uh, slide, I have written a definition, what is this? It is called lambda. What is this lambda? This lambda, if you see, this is the one of the parameter, which is the how the air and fuel intake ratio. This is called the air and fuel intake ratio. So, what is the air to fuel ratio actual means what the engine is taking and what is the air to fuel ratio in case it is the complete reaction that is stoichiometric quantities. So, that is called the lambda. This lambda, if you notice carefully in your PUC, pollution certificate which you get from your state governments, you will see they will write out the value of lambda at the end. You will see a value of close to 1, the value of close to 1 is the prescribed limit by government of India. So, that is what lambda stands for, it is the ratio of the air to fuel actual to air to fuel stage. So, it means if uh, lambda is less than 1, it is called a what you call is? it is a oxygen rich, if lambda is less than 1, it is a fuel rich, but reducing environment. But reducing environment, okay. And if lambda is greater than 1, means it is fuel lean, but 
oxidizing environment. Okay, please pay this attention, pay this definition very carefully, lambda greater than 1, sorry lambda less than 1, lambda greater than 1. So, when we talk of fuel lean, the less of fuel then what is more oxygen and when we talk of fuel rich, it is more of fuel obviously oxygen less. So, this particular graph which I have drawn which is plotted here shows for gasoline gasoline only ok. Now, what it is? It is a concentration. So, the concentration of the various exhaust gases. So, this is in ppm, this is in volume percent. Various gases are plotted with respect to lambda. Lambda is that ratio. Now, if you see the uh, what it is? The NO production, production of NO nitrous oxide increases with lambda. So, if you operate in a very if lambda is less than 1, so if you more you operate in the reducing environment, lesser will be the formation of NO or hydrocarbons or carbon monoxide, is not it? So, uh, you know if you that is why if it is lesser to this, the values of CO, HC, NO will be very, very less. Okay. But if you increase this lambda, that is if it is fuel lean but more oxidizing in nature, what happens is in the oxidizing environment, what will happen is your nitrogen oxide will lower down. Why? Because as you go to higher and higher lambda, the temperature also decreases. This NO formation is also favored by high temperature. So, in a way, one way you are producing more oxygen but then your temperature decreases. So, in temperature decreases this NO goes down. Okay. So, NO goes down means you have less of uh, NO, but in hydrocarbons, so in a, let us say in the case of if I want to recollect it with increasing lambda, with increasing lambda the carbon monoxide and hydrocarbon emissions, the carbon monoxide and the hydrocarbon emissions decreases with increasing lambda, increasing lambda means which is fuel lean but oxidizing environment. So, this is the case mostly, this is the case mostly which is the case for gasoline environment, fuel lean, this is the case for gasoline environment. Okay. So, with increasing lambda, with increasing lambda, your both carbon monoxide and hydrocarbon concentration will go down because just pay attention to this because when it is fuel lean, what does this fuel lean means? Fuel lean means you have more oxygen. So, if you have more oxygen, so both the hydrocarbons as well as carbon monoxide can get converted to its respective carbon dioxide or the respective to CO2 or HTO. Okay. So, if you have more towards if you so just remember this is the uh, you know the rule of thumb this here more of oxygen this here. So, more of oxygen and to this end less of oxygen okay. oxygen is lesser and lesser. So, lambda is less than 1 means fuel rich, but reducing environment but lambda greater than 1 means fuel lean but oxidizing environment. So, carbon monoxide and hydrocarbons, carbon monoxide CO plus hydrocarbons HC will be less, will be less in diesel engines, will be less in diesel engines as compared means will less than diesel engines means as compared to gasoline means our petrol cars as compared to gasoline because they always as they operate they operate at lean concentration at lean condition. Okay. at lean condition fine. 
So it means this is that case in the fuel lane this is the case so that this is if I write positive means more oxygen so which is the case for diesel engine. So do to this end it is your I do not have space to write here but I can just make out some space here petrol engine. Petrol and gasoline are used interchangeably. So, you should understand these things. Towards this side you have the diesel engine. So, lambda is opposite operated. So, at higher than 1 while it is less than 1 for petrol engine. Now, see what happens in petrol engine. So, it is uh, no, it is fuel rich but it is a reducing environment. The fuel rich means then you have to take care of NO fuel rich. Then fuel rich means uh, you will be there because it is going down. But uh, as compared to diesel engine it is not it will still is higher it is still higher as compared to diesel engine because this curve it looks like it is going down. So, this CO it is lesser in the case of diesel engine as compared to petrol engine. So, the diesel engine they have to worry more of this NO part ok they have to worry more of the NOx part as compared to hydrocarbons and CO. And another thing they have to worry in petrol engine because of the more oxidizing nature in diesel engine. So, they have to worry about the particulate matter that is where all the innovation came about. So, I hope you have understood. So, if you want to remember these two definition you should be very uh, careful. One is a fuel lean less oxygen, fuel lean means this is less oxygen, this is in a petrol engine. Then uh, you have fuel uh, rich means more oxygen which is the diesel engine ok. I hope you understood ok. So, we go ahead. So, there are some certain control strategies specified by the government. What are the specification? So, the first is the primary strategies. What are the primary strategies? First is speed limitation. So, it has been seen that the emission of NOx increases with vehicle speed. So, it means that if you have a diesel uh, this engine, so if you increase the speed, the rise in speed is the result of greater temperature because if you increase the speed, temperatures will be higher and the B2 the reaction kinetics formulation of NOx will be more ok. So, that is the reason there should be a speed limitation that is why we always say the speed should be limited, should not be higher speed. So, that is to lower the NOx. So, you must have seen in the roadways and the highways you always have a speed limit given. Then uh, you may change the fuel for example, in hydro treating process is successful for sulphur, but, but it is not good for NOx because NOx is not removed in hydro treating. It is removed some of the nitrogen products which are in aromatic nature, but the NOx which are produced are mainly from the radical formation with oxygen. So, one is the way is to use a Fischer Tropsch diesel fuel which is made from let us say let us say a fuel let us say made from di biodiesel such as biodiesel or there is some Fischer Tropsch diesel fuel either of you we can use and maybe you can get reformulated fuel to have lower emission. Then you may have engine modification because as lambda is greater than 1.3 this is one standard they have set, but the fuel lean condition. Because, because of the fuel lean condition more and more of oxygen is there. So, it will reduce the carbon monoxide and the NOx, it will reduce carbon monoxide, but uh, the NOx also it reduce, but it will lead to ignition problem. Because if you have more of oxygen less of fuel, then it will lead to a ignition problem. To circumvent this problem, what nowadays people do is they apply this what the concept is higher compression, they increase the compression ratio, high compression lean burn engines. But uh, the problem is another thing is what uh, most of the entrepreneur manufacturer they do is they do a exhaust gas recirculation. So, it will reduce the NOx or they because problem is it will reduce NOx, but it will increase particulate matter. it will increase particulate. So, NOx is going down, but on the other hand particulate will go up and if you conduct it at high pressure injection, it will reduce the particulate matter, but then your NOx will go up. So, you can see there is no quick fix solution. So, remove NOx. So, what it is then we have to move to the secondary processes. What are these secondary processes? This is the heart of the process which is the catalytic process. So, catalytic process is where the monolith comes into the picture. 
So now if I want to write out the expression, these are the expression. So this is your fuel. So this is the fuel. So if it is totally oxidized, so this stoichiometric equivalents are written here and it will form carbon dioxide and water. So it is less than 0, delta H is less than 0, it is negative, it is exothermic in nature. And if it is not completely oxidized, then these reactions will take place, carbon monoxide will react to this oxygen to form carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide will combine with nitrous oxide to form nitrogen and CO2. This is the ideal cases which should happen actually. So these are the uh, reactions which are required to happen so as to convert the exhaust gases to either CO2 or H2O that we call as complete combustion. So in the initial part in 1976-79 what they did was uh, you know you, what they did they added fuel and then added air. So you had an engine here then they added a part of the air to the oxidation catalysis. Now what it will do is it will uh, remove the NOx, HC and CO. So initially in 76-79 they were not much uh, concerned about the NOx production. So the NOx they were not able to reduce and there was no legislation also. So they were able to convert this HC and CO through these reactions, the reactions which is above and then they have exhaust gases. So one way what they did to eliminate this NOx down uh, to eliminate this NOx is to recirculate the exhaust gases back to the initial feed. What happens is while doing so the temperature is kept low, so if the temperature is kept low, so the production of NOx actually decreases that is the way they used to do it in the initial years. So later on the control strategy is bit changed, these are your desired reaction which you need to achieve. What they did is they did it separately. So they did uh, fuel and air were injected to the engine and again you had a sub supplementary feed of oxygen going to the oxidation catalyst because this reduction catalyst they sent to convert this NOx, this NOx were converted nitrogen and CO2 use the reduction catalyst because the issue is all these reduction reactions with NOx needs to be done in reducing atmosphere. Now for a gasoline engine fine we can obviously have it because it is a reducing environment because it is fuel rich. But for a diesel engine which is a oxidizing environment you cannot conduct this reaction. So what they did uh, they require additional oxygen so did it they be before the oxidation they did reduction. So they produce a reduction catalyst they send uh, they can uh, check the control the supply of oxygen so that you make a reducing environment convert NOx to this nitrogen and CO2 then send the remaining to the oxidation catalyst. This next oxidation catalyst then converted the remaining hydrocarbons and carbon monoxide back to CO2 and H2 and you have the, high, the exhaust gases. So you need additional oxygen in order to convert to the reducing to the this is the reducing environment, reducing atmosphere. and this is the oxidizing atmosphere okay. So issue is the reducing atmosphere I am just again repeating this is the case so re reducing atmosphere this is the case now remember reducing atmosphere is mostly present in the gasoline or petrol engine. Okay, in the gasoline engine. So you can convert this NOx, but this is uh, the gasoline engine, but uh, oxidizing environment but the oxidizing atmosphere you have the diesel engine where you cannot convert this NOx, you cannot convert it, this NOx you cannot never convert it because it is a reducing environment. So that is the problem but here you can convert NOx easily, you can convert it easily okay. So that is the way 
we actually look at this. So, reducing atmos atmosphere and oxidizing atmosphere. The oxidizing atmosphere means fuel lean. Fuel lean means you have a fuel less of fuel, okay. And this is reducing atmosphere, it is fuel rich. So, we have more of uh, uh, less of oxygen. Then finally, and from 1986 onwards, so they what they wanted instead of two different reaction chamber, they went with a single reaction chamber that is the three way catalyst. So, three way catalyst what it is made up of platinum and rhodium. So, it is the same thing what it you have sent air, you inject fuel after the engine performance is over, the exhaust gas is sent to the catalytic converter which converts this NOx. HC and CO and send it and produce exhaust gases. Again repeating this is only for your gasoline, gasoline engines not petrol. All this whatever examples I am showing is gasoline engines, okay. So, this was uh, the, the recent one this three way catalyst and this is what they are trying to do or they have innovated in case of monolith reactor in the monoliths. They are trying to, they are attempted and now it is commercially, it is yeah, all automobile are using this monolith reactors where this three way catalyst is present. So, this catalytic converter just now we have seen what are the attributes it should have, it should have a low pressure drop, it should be resistant, it, it should have a strong resistance to extreme temperature and corrosive environment. So, the initial converters it is prior to 86 were ordinary fixed bed reactors which were packed with the catalyst particles. So, problem is they were heavy and because of this heaviness there is a result of vibrational and mechanical stress. Because of this there was attrition of the catalyst particles which was the primary worry and the catalyst got deactivated. That is why this monolithic innovation came into the picture. So, nowadays majority of the catalytic converters used in automobiles are monolith reactors they will combine a smaller size and weight with a reduced pressure drop. So, the resulting in a greater fuel economy than conventional fixed bed reactor. So, it means so will co combine it. So, what the reactors will combine low pressure drop and find out what is the way you can uh, do in a greater fuel economy. So, this is how the monolithic reactor is mounted in a engine, in a automobile engine. So, it is present inside a stainless steel catalytic housing and in this housing you have this the catalyst. So, uh, so it is, is that casing. So, inside these catalyst structures if you see these are the substrate, there is a wire mesh, it is strongly bonded so that it is not be uh, you know it is not disturbed by the external stresses. So, the what are the operating conditions? The temperature is around uh, it should be able to operate a high temperature 570 to 170 Kelvin. The space velocity is the amount of volume of exhaust gas it is about to treat per uh, volume of the reactor per hour that is 1 to 2 into the power of 5. Then the volume ratio of the catalyst and cylinder should be around 0 0.1 to 0 0.8 to 1.5. So, this is the innovation which has been now mostly in automobiles they are using the monolith reactors. So, the issue is now the prescribed lambda. Now, if you see what the government agencies have actually recommended is lambda 1 for effective conversion. So, if you have at this lambda equal to 1, so if you see now instead of this particular uh, excess, this is a percentage of conversion, okay. This is percentage conversion. So, percentage and conversion of hydrocarbon carbon monoxide NO. So, it means see if it has 1, what you do is, so if it has 1, so you see the most of the NO, most of the hydrocarbon, most of the carbon monoxide are converted, you can say almost 80 percent. That is why if you see in your PUC certificate, this lambda will be close to 1. Lambda close to 1 means your car is okay. So, it is a green light that is fine, your um, catalytic converter is working perfectly fine. So, that is the way this lambda 1 came into the picture. Again, I am talking about this, this petrol engine or gasoline engines only. So, automotive catalyst is already consumed. The only issue is this platinum and this catalyst. The platinum and the rhodium is not produced much, but this automobile industry consume almost 40 percent of the platinum and almost 80 percent of the rhodium. There is a problem because in the reducing environment, because it is a fuel lean, sorry, the fuel rich environment which is a reducing environment, reduction of sulphur dioxide to hydrogen sulphide also takes place. 
and there may be formation of N2 at intermediate temperature. This NTO is not at all good because nitrous oxide can damage the ozone layer. So that is also we have to take care and now research is going on so that the production of this reduction to sulphur dioxide and hydrogen sulphide because oxygen is less. Okay, so this may occur, these two compounds may form. So we have to take care that uh, even with this stoichiometric constant that is lambda equal to 1, you should not produce these gases. So now we come to the diesel engines. Now diesel engines as I told you, the problem is not for the removal of the CO or HC because anyway these are not produced much because these are anyway less because it is a oxygen is more in the diesel engine. So, the oxygen means more means it will be totally combusted to their respective gases. Problem is with the particulate control. So, only thing is it will produce particulates as well as NOx. So, this abatement is more troublesome. So, what they do? Particles, these particles, this particulate have poor reactivity in oxidation and NOx reduction because NOx reduction, reduction of this NOx gas is only possible in a reducing environment but uh, diesel engine operates in oxidizing condition. So you have the trade off, so you have oxidizing environment but you want to conduct a, uh, the reduction. So how do you do that? How do you remove oxygen? You cannot do that. And then the problem is this particulate, the particulate forms the suit. Now here is the innovation. So here is the innovation, the Johnson method is a company, famous company. It shows that nitrogen oxide instead of directly oxidizing with oxygen, it is seen that nitrogen oxide is significantly more reactive than oxygen. So if you have soot collected in the initial part, so it will be more likely to react with nitrogen oxide as compared to direct with oxygen. So what they designed a is a continuously regenerating trap CRT or a two stage particulate filtered unit consisting of an oxidation monolith. So initial part is oxidation monolith and then we have the traditional soot trap. So ox oxidation monolith followed by the traditional soot trap. So oxidation monolith what happens? This happens. The nitrogen NOx produced is then converted okay? because other gases easily get converted carbon monoxide uh, and hydrocarbons to CO2 but NO is not converted to N2. So remember this NO will never get converted to N2, it will never happen in a reducing environment. But NO can be converted to NO2 in an oxidizing environment. This is exactly what happens in the oxidation monolith part. So this NO2 is formed, other gases are also converted like CO is converted CO2 and okay that also occurs but we are concerned with this nitrogen NOx. So once this NO2 is obtained, what it does is the NO2, this NO2 then reacts with the soot which is already captured in the soot trap. Now this soot trap then reacts with soot is here carbon, this soot react with nitrogen dioxide to form NO plus CO. Okay. So it means that uh, this NO, it is not eliminated, you know. So it is not taken down. So it means it is converted to NO2 and this soot, we are now concentrated more on the soot part. What is this soot part? Is carbon. We have to remove this. The soot actually is with the help of NOx only, they are producing nitrogen dioxide and this nitrogen dioxide actually converts to NO and CO. Now this NO is again sent back. How do you send it back? What they do in soot trap is they coat it with a platinum gauge. The, they will coat it with a platinum gauze so that this reaction NO gets again converted to NO2. So these are the two reactions, this is their innovation by Johnson Mathe. Uh, only issue is it requires a low sulfur fuel because the soot has a platinum gauze and this platinum gauze can be easily poisoned if it has if the fuel has excess sulfur because sulfur here acts as a catalyst poison. So what are then, uh, then what is this? Okay, fine, we have then removed particulate, we have removed carbon monoxide, we have removed HC. What about NOx? Still we have not seen anything. Well, NOx, as you know, it can only be done in a selective converting reactor. So selective catalytic reduction, how is it done? Now issue is you cannot do it in oxidizing environment. So you have to use a separate reactor. What it does is in most of the case now, you form, you start with urea, so urea will produce ammonia. So you do it in the presence of ammonia instead of oxygen. So when ammonia, so there are two parts in this case for the removal of NOx. You have the ammonia production unit followed by the 
or we can say hydrolysis unit followed by the reduction unit. So, the hydrolysis unit will convert to ammonia and CO2 and this ammonia will react with NO or NO2 to form nitrogen and water. This is the way they are the selective catalytic reduction works. So, reaction takes place in one monolithic reactor with the upstream part being used for hydrolysis of urea and the downstream part for SCR. Now, an another improvement with SCR is what they do is instead because SCR you know you have a very heavy the selective catalytic reaction. What they do is they use this concept lean NOx traps LNT. The lean NOx trap because SCR is very large so in the diesel engine similarly a three way catalyst like in gasoline engines, but they are modified with oxides which forms nitrate with NOx and is stable under oxidizing condition. So, we need to do something some oxide which is stable in the oxidizing environment because diesel engine has oxidizing environment. So, this is seen that there are some barium oxide is pretty stable in the case of oxidizing nature. So, in this what happens? So, it will have it will produce oxides of this metal oxides which is stable in oxidizing environment and then once you take out the oxygen in the reducing environment it will just decompose. So, if you send up fuel to that particular metal oxide it will decompose back to CO2, H2 and all other compounds. So, what is the first reaction? The NO reacts with oxygen to form NO2 like before and then this barium oxide is used as the lean NOx trap. It traps the NO2 and forms barium nitrate. Now, this barium nitrate is very stable under the driving condition or the oxidizing condition, but decomposes in rich composition. In rich means you send a fuel once this barium nitrate is formed, this fuel reacts with the barium nitrate to form barium oxide, nitrogen, CO2, H2O. So, in that case the nitrogen, CO2, H2O is formed that takes care of the NOx emission. So, what it does is initially they will trap the soot and once the soot is saturated then they will in a short time period they will uh, you know the NOx is saturated they will send the fuel for 2 to 5 seconds to provide a reducing environment because when you are adding fuel you are reducing the oxygen content so that this reaction takes place. So, this is called lean NOx traps. Now, we move on to one of the few examples of monolithic reactor that is the production of thallic anhydride. The production of thallic anhydride is a crucial thallic anhydride is a crucial feedstock. Okay, it's a very crucial feedstock which is used for the production of plasticizer and plastics. The manufacture of thallic anhydride includes the selective oxidation of orthoxylene in air, which is catalyzed heterogeneously. So this is orthoxylene, which is it reacts with oxygen. It forms thallic anhydride and water. This is highly exothermic reaction. So, it looks very simple, but it is not at all because you cannot have this because the inlet concentration of orthoxylene is limited. If you have more and more of orthoxylene, then you may have some intermediate compounds. So, the your yield will be very less. So, process is exo extremely exothermic. So, controlling the temperature of the reactor is a formidable problem. So, what they do is since it is exothermic, they use multitubular reactors with external cooling. So, you might have seen that we have discussed previously also when the hydrocarbon is passed through this multitubular reactor, it takes away the heat of reaction. So, we have to increase the orthoxylene intake concentration from approximately 60 gram per meter to 100 grams per meter STP or more in order to reduce the investment and utility expenses. This is the or constraint, industrial constraint. Due to the high exothermicity of the reaction, this concentration increase causes the reactor temperature to rise because if you um, increase from 60 to 100, so more and more feed is sent to the reactor, so more reaction will take place. So, obviously, the temperature will rise. So, issue is we can obviously reduce the temperature by quench reactors or we uh, put the feed in different locations, cold feed, but still it may lead in catalyst reactivation and the orthoxylene conversion and thallic anhydride selectivity thus fall below the process limitation. Okay, so, higher feed is fine, but if you put a higher feed, what happens? The conversion is not that high and intermediates are formed. So, implementing a catalytic post reactor. So, can we put a some catalytic post reactor? So, that whatever remaining feed is coming out from the reactor or the unreacted orthoxylene is converted to thallic anhydride is a solution to this 
issue. Consequently, the product output and quality are increased. So, this Lurgi, GEA and Walker, these are three car companies, famous company, they have come out with a solution. They have inserted additional reactor after the main reactor and they used a monolithic reactor with a honeycomb lattice. What they did, only you have to regulate the inlet gas temperature. That is the inlet gas temperature is orthoxylene and this air, whatever is inserted that you have to in other things will work fine. It showed increased conversion and selectivity. What we see is considerable amount of xylene and intermediate under oxidation products are converted to thylic anhydride. So, once the products come in the bottom part, they are cooled and they are sent to a monolithic post reactor. Then whatever unreacted xylene is present, they are again converted across this monolithic reactor. Because these are very easy, you do not have to change the entire plant, you just simply put another structure to the existing reactor, finish it up. So, the do not have much investment, low, nothing, economics is also not disturbed because only the inlet gas temperature you have to manipulate. So, that is what it is, if you see we have this molten salt just to keep it uh, heat, take away the heat, you generate the steam water here, the waste steam water here, then you send the product for separation. So, it allows an extended period of operation between catalyst exchanges. Okay, so, that is the thing. So, you can process more amount of feed in this particular monolithic reactor. So, that is why the conversion per pass is more and it becomes continuous also and ease of operation with not much change in the existing plant. See? So, this is one of the example of which we have discussed and I will stop here. So, I will like you to go through these references. This is a book which you actually you should have be going through it. Then uh, the what are diesel compounds, the gases which are coming out, you can have this Johnson Matthew, this CRT, that uh, CRT trap which I just now discussed. It the more discussions or details are given in this website. Then you should also go to this oxidation of orthoxylene to thalic anhydride. They have given a detailed uh, the about regarding the honeycomb lattice how this honeycomb lattice is able to do the, the process, the plant part, the pilot plant they have discussed in detail. Then this article talks about the monolith reactors in detail. The structure catalyst, these are the same authors uh, as of the book, they will ac actually give the perspective for the demanding application using structure catalyst which are including the monolith. And this is the actually the process which the Mathe has developed for the you know, this John Johnson, John Mathe for the CRT section. So, you should also go to this website, you will get a better idea. Thank you.